Hey, everybody, welcome back to Mr. K's 30 Minutes of Math. I hope you're all doing well. It's a nice warm day outside, so I do hope you get some time outside to enjoy the beautiful weather. The forecast says there's going to be some storms tomorrow, so probably makes sense to get outside today before they come. All right, let's dive into our math riddle from yesterday. I'll turn off the video so I can focus on that. One second, please. Okay, so we had uh, this interesting little math problem with bears, bunnies, and foxes. And the way it worked is we added up uh, some of the animals to get some amount and then other animals to get a different amount and had to figure it out. So uh, if we took a look at it, I see, um, I see a few folks writing in. The bears uh, added up to 120 when we had two of them. I'm sorry, again, one second. I need to just take a quick uh, move to uh, address just one thing. Sorry about that. And we'll be back in a second. All right. And OK, I think we are good now. All right. so. Um, one more thing that I'm going to take care of. Okay, uh, so we had our bunnies were each, when we added two of them, we get 60 each. So, I'm sorry, we had two of them, we get 120, which is 60 kilograms. So 60 plus what gives us 70? 10 more for the bunny. And then 60 plus 10 for the bunny is 70. And then the fox would be 20 kilograms. So there you have it. That is our answer for today. All right, let's go to our homework from last night. So let me slide over to that. Uh, let's read it together. Here we go. A football team was training for four hours, four hours. During the first hour, they practiced for five eighths of an hour. So let's do this, hour one, two, three, and four. And the first hour, they practiced for five eighths. Okay, during the second hour, they practiced for two thirds. All right, let me separate that out. During the last two hours, they first practiced for three-fifths of an hour, then took a half hour break, and then practiced for the rest of the time. So they did three-fifths of an hour, took a half hour break, and then practiced the rest of the time. So let's talk about that. So I'm going to do a number line on this one. Zero, one, two. So this is the last two hours. They did three fifths of uh, first, which would be this portion. Then they took a half hour break and then practiced the rest. So the question is, then how much time, I'm sorry, then we had half an hour, and then the rest. So we have three-fifths plus half. That's how much uh, they practiced and rested. And then what we're left with is how much would be ultimately left uh, for them to practice. So a little bit confusing, but let's try to figure this out. So first, let's do hour one and hour two. Five eighths 
plus two thirds of an hour. And let's go to 20 fourths. We're gonna decompose our eighths and our thirds. So that would be 15 and that would be 16. So to start off, they had 31 20 fourths. Then we know they did three fifths. Um, then they took a half hour off and then uh, the rest of the time that was left. So if they did three fifths of an hour plus half of an hour, that would be, and I'm gonna turn this into tenths, six tenths and five tenths. So 11 tenths is how much uh, they worked on the third hour and then rested, which means uh, nine tenths would be left over because two hours is 20 tenths. So we'll come back to that. And so I'm going to erase all this and give you some room. I know this one was super complicated. So here we have it, 31 twenty fourths plus three fifths plus nine tenths. Let me erase all this. And so I'm going to change this one into six tenths, which would be 15 tenths, which is the same as one and five tenths. Okay, so that's that part. And this part would be the same as one and seven twenty fourths. Whew. Uh, and then <laughs> if we take the final step to bring these together, I'm gonna do an estimate. It would be two holes and then we have about half there and a little bit less than a half there. So I'm gonna estimate at two and a half. We could finish it out, but it's gonna take a little bit extra time, but I do want to move on. So about two and a half hours. All right, I'm sorry that was a little bit complicated to start things off, but let's dive in to our new work for today, which is to convert between fractions and decimals and then back again. I want you guys to have a lot of, um, ease in being able to go back and forth between them. So first we have here uh, shade the first seven units of the tape diagram. Shade the first seven units of the tape diagram. So here they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then it says count by tenths to label the number line using a fraction and decimal for each point. So Right here, that's one-tenth. That's how we write it in decimals. And that's how we write it in fractions. They are the same thing. It's like two different languages, like English and Spanish. Hello and hola, same exact thing, just two different languages. Fractions and decimals are exactly like that, two different languages uh, for the same exact thing. So here we go. Uh, Two-tenths would be here three-tenths, four-tenths, five-tenths, six-tenths, seven-tenths, eight-tenths, nine-tenths, and then ten-tenths, which is the same as one whole. And in decimals, two-tenths, there you go, three-tenths, four-tenths, five-tenths, six-tenths, seven-tenths, eight-tenths, nine tenths and then one whole you could also write it like that if you would like all right not too bad not too bad um go ahead and take a look at this one see if you can fill that in let me give you a little bit of music for that one go ahead <laughs> Okay, welcome back. Hopefully this wasn't uh, too difficult. Uh, we have a bottle, one liter bottle with some water in it. Let me 
shade our water. Um, oops, I covered up our measurement. Sorry about that. We have five tenths, 0 0.5, five tenths of a liter, five tenths. Uh, very good. And that equals 0 0.5 liters. Um, all right. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The five tenths mark, what they're saying is, my apologies, that's five tenths. So that's what they were showing. Okay, so that means that this one is at six tenths right up here, which would be 0 0.6. This one up here is all the way at eight tenths, which is 0 0.8. This one looks like it is at zero tenths. It's empty. Oh, wait a second. They're telling us that we're at 0.9 liters. Sorry, I was looking at the shading, 0.9. That's what it says right here. So this would be 9 tenths, which means we need to shade it all the way up there. All right, very good. Let's keep going. This one, <clears throat> we're just converting. 8 tenths uh, centimeters is the same as 0 0.8. 2 tenths, the same as 0 0.2. 6 tenths, the same as 0 0.6. 8 tenths. 0 0.8. Oh my gosh, I apologize. I didn't even read the directions today. Whew, my brain is a little bit fuzzy today. I'm so sorry. We're supposed to fill in the blank to make the sentence true. So if I have 8 tenths and I want to get one full centimeter, I need to add in two more tenths. If I have two tenths and I want to get one full centimeter, I need to add in eight tenths. If I have six tenths and I want to get one full centimeter, I need to add in four tenths. Similarly, if I'm at 0.8, which is eight tenths, and I want to go to 1.0, one whole centimeter, I need two tenths. If I have two tenths and I want to get one full, which is 10 tenths, I need eight more, which is eight tenths. And here, if I have six tenths, 0 0.6, and I want to get 10 tenths or one full centimeter, then I need 0 0.4, which is the same as 4 tenths. All right, let's get to our riddle of the day. Why doesn't Yoda like triangles? Why doesn't Yoda like triangles? <laughs> Hey, welcome back. Why doesn't Yoda like triangles? Well, because to him, there are no triangles, just do or do not angles. Just do or do not angles. And you know, I even have for you a clip to show. So hold on one second. I'm going to hopefully get this to work. All right, hopefully you guys can see the Yoda clip. Here we go, you ready? Always with you, what cannot be done. Hear you nothing that I say. You must unlearn what you have learned. All right, I'll give it a try. No, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. And there you have it. That is the famous do or do not. There is no try. All right, so let us use that inspiration to return to our triangles uh, and our graphing that we have been doing. Uh, take a look at this triangle. This is an isosceles triangle, meaning that it has two sides that are the same length. What I would like you to do is go ahead, look at these points, and let's call this A, B, and C. 
go ahead and take a minute to write down the coordinates for A, B, and C. And then I would like you to also go ahead and calculate the slope of the blue line connecting A and B. And I also want you to calculate the slope of the green line, which is connecting A and C. Go ahead and take a couple of minutes and work on that one, and then we will return. <laughs> Okay, welcome back everybody. Hopefully you were able to tackle these. Let's start with A, and I'll use red for A. And remember, we always use the origin as our starting point. Okay, how far do we go on the x-axis? Well, we don't go anywhere. Uh, it's, no, it's neither any units to the right or any units to the left, so zero. And then we are one, two, three units up, so positive three for our y-axis. All right, so A is zero, three. Okay, let's move on to B. Again, we'll start at the origin. I'll use yellow for this one. And we go one, two units to the right, so that's positive two. And then we go one, two, three units down, so that's negative three. And then maybe I'll use green for C, starting at the origin, one, two units to the left, so it's negative two. And then one, two, three down, negative three. Hopefully you guys were able to get those. And then to do the slope, starting with the green line, what was our rise? Well, let me get rid of all this so we have some more room. What was the rise? Whoops, I do want my green line back though. So let's do that and let's do that and that. Okay, that worked. Green line, let's see what is our slope? What's our rise over run? All right, here's our rise. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Over, what's our run? One, two to the right. So six over two which also, as you know, is the same as three over one. And what you'll notice is we could also do that. Watch, one, two, three, and then over one would also put us on the line. Okay, now let's look at the slope of the blue line. Let's do our rise first. One, two, three, four, five, six. And our run, this time we're going to the left, so it's going to be negative, negative one, negative two, which is the same as a negative three over one. Let's see if that would work. So if I started at A and I did a negative three, so I went down three, one, two, three, and then a positive one and went over to the right one, absolutely, that works too. What you'll notice, what's really cool here, is the slope of the green line and the blue line 
are opposites. They are opposites because in an isosceles triangle, the lines of the two equal sides always have opposite slopes. One's positive, one's negative. Very cool. Let's try one more. We're gonna do the same idea. So let's call this one A, B, and this one C. Go ahead and figure out the coordinates for A, B, and C. And let's get the, let's do this one as our blue line. And then we'll do this one as our green line. All right, I'll give you some music. Go ahead and take a second to work on that one. Okay, welcome back on this one. Let's see how we did. A, right here, start at the origin. One, two, three, four, five, six to the left, negative six. And then one, two, three, four, five up. So positive five. B, one, two, three, four to the right. So positive four. And then one, two, three, four, five. Five up, so positive five. And then C, one to the left, negative one. And then one, two, three up, positive three. Hopefully that worked out for you guys. And let's see about our slope. So let me just get rid of this so we have a little bit more clarity. Okay. Uh, let's, do, let's do our blue line first. And if we want to calculate the slope, remember rise over run. So I'll start with C and go one, two up. And our run would be one, two, three, four, five across to the right. So two fifths would be our slope for the blue line. And if you remember what we talked about with the last problem, we should see that the green line is a negative two fifths. Let's see if that works out. Um, I'm sorry, that should be in green, just to remind us that that one, we're talking about the green line. So let's see, uh, could we go uh, two down and then five across? Let's see, one, two, that's two down, and then one, two, three, four, five across. So yes, it does work out as it should. Remember, when you have an isosceles triangle, the two equal sides will have opposite slopes. All right, let's go back uh, just for a couple of minutes on our fractions to decimals work. Um, here we have, uh, we're gonna show two and six tenths, two ones and six tenths. Let me do some shading with my yellow high highlighter. 
So that would be two holes. That's 10 tenths. And here's another 10 tenths, so 20 tenths. And then we had six more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's our six. And then they show that down here. <laughs> two and six tenths is the same as two holes plus six tenths, which is the same as two plus 0 0.6, which is the same as 2.6. Let's try one more of those. 37 tenths. 37 tenths. Hmm. All right, well, here's 10 tenths. And there's 10 more, that's 20. And 10 more, that's 30. And if you want, we can also number bond this one. 10 tenths, 10 tenths, whoops, I didn't do my line. And 10 tenths. So one, two, three, that's one, two, three. Uh, then we would have seven tenths left over. So let's go ahead and shade those in. And the question is, how much more is needed to get to five? Well, we need three more tenths to get our fourth hole. That would be three tenths. And then we need one more hole which would be 10 tenths, which is 13 tenths. Now, we could also write this like this. 3 tenths we know is 0.3. 10 tenths we know is one whole. So 3 tenths and one whole is the same as 1 and 3 tenths. There you have it, 13 tenths, 1 and 3 tenths. All right, fantastic. We have just a couple minutes left. Uh, go ahead and, uh, you know what, I'm gonna do this one with you just because it's a little bit hard for you to draw on your own. Two ones and four tenths. Okay, here's one, one, that's 10 tenths. And here's another one, that's another 10 tenths. And then four tenths, that's right there. Okay, so we see down here two and four tenths is the same as two holes plus four tenths, which is the same as two plus 0 0.4, which is the same as 2.4. And if it asks you how much more do you need to get to five holes, well, we could do that. We would know it's six more tenths here, then 10 more tenths and 10 more tenths. So that would be 6 tenths or 0 0.6. 10 tenths, which is the same as one whole. 10 tenths, another one whole, which would be 2 and 6 tenths. And that should make sense because this is one and that's another one. 2 and 6 tenths. All right, let me show your homework for tonight. Go ahead and write these down. Uh, the, the assignment is to draw a line segment to match each of these and express each measurement as an equivalent mixed number. So uh, basically, you could do it like this. Two and, I'm gonna actually use a, a number line. How, why don't we do that? Zero, one, two, three. Uh, two and six tenths. So, whoops, my apologies. That needs to be in tenths. So, two and six tenths would take us to right here. And each of those are tenths. And so we would have two, two and six. Go ahead, jot down the rest of them so you can work on those tonight. And then finally, our riddle for the day before we wrap up for today. It's 3.35 on the clock below. 3.35 on the clock below. This would be the 12, the
this would be the three, this would be the six, and this would be the nine. 335, if you rotate the clock 90 degrees counterclockwise, counterclockwise is this way, what time would it be? What time would it be? So if it's 335 p.m. now, and you rotate the clock 90 degrees counterclockwise, what time would it be? All right, everybody, uh, good luck with that, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye, everyone.